Um, I think that people who are going to join are already here. And I think a lot of other people, I, um, I think we, um, I think we would actually get more, more attendance if I, if we didn't post recordings promptly, but we do. And then they always get like a hundred something views. So <laughs> like views. yeah, well, yes, I like views too. But anyways, um, so it's been three weeks since we had the last public stand up, and uh, I'm going to outline some of the progress that has been made. Um, and specifically, the biggest thing that has made it into master since three weeks ago is that we now have um, basic transaction batches working and transaction batches in the uh, in the Althea Peggy design are trans are transactions that bring uh, are transactions that move coins from Cosmos back to Ethereum. And these are batches. They're, they're executed in batches of more than one, which provides a lot, of, um, which provides the enormous cost reductions, which have been very core to this design. Um, specifically, what we're going to be looking, did they delete the records of this build? It is 17 days old. Okay, so that's fine. Um, so if you were to run the all up test, uh, you, you will actually see that uh, transaction batches work and some transactions get sent um, and well, one transaction gets sent from Cosmos back to Ethereum. So now the all up test flow uh, and you can run it yourself, just clone this repo, go to tests and run uh, all up test.sh. Um, be sure to have Docker installed. It'll do everything else. It takes a little while because it builds absolutely everything, uh, but it will build the orchestrator, build the Solidity contract, start a Cosmos testnet, start an Ethereum testnet, deploy, um, uh, and then finally actually run the code. So uh, yeah, it'll deploy the contracts and then it will actually uh, send, um, send some tokens from Ethereum to Cosmos, and then some tokens from Cosmos to Ethereum. Now, uh, we thought that this was a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, checkpoint. Um, and after completing this, we immediately moved to our uh, to our Stargate upgrade, which has a lot of work in it, uh, specifically by Jack. Um, and Jack, I'd actually appreciate it um, if you could talk a little bit about, you know, like what needs to be done to upgrade a module and all of that. Because I haven't seen a lot. I mean, I've seen written stuff about it, but not a lot of like casual summaries. Yeah, for sure. Um, so there, yeah, the, the written summaries out there, everyone's kind of finding their own way to do this and writing little guides on how to do Stargate migrations. I'll probably uh, write up a short blog post with a few paragraphs on, on sort of how I did this. Um, but Basically, when you run the go get for the Stargate release on the Cosmos SDK, um, nothing compiles. <laughs> you have a number of imports that have uh, nowhere to go in the new code. And it, it's really kind of hard to figure out how to get started. So what I found is helpful is um, a big part of this Stargate upgrade is the proto migration. So starting by writing proto files for your module and getting all the proto stuff wired up is kind of how I started. So if you actually look at the first two commits there, Justin, you don't need to click on them because it's going to be messy. Um, <laughs> but because uh, there's tens of thousands of lines in those first couple of commits. Um, if you can go through your types folder in your module find all of your structs, all of your interfaces, and write proto files for those, and then get the Go code for those proto files generated. Start uh, removing the uh, non-generated types, and then getting the types tests to compile and pass is kind of the first step in the proto migration. So um, if you're not familiar with Go, that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, um, but you know, uh, there's a, in that second commit there, you can kind of see the command I was running to get it to compile, um, to get it to run the tests and compile. So that is uh, the first step in the proto module migration. The next one I moved on from there to the keeper tests. Um, the type stuff is basically just all of the tests and types are basic, like really, really basic unit tests. Keeper generally starts getting into some more complex things that actually test some of the app functionality. 
So you'll start to see at that point if any of the changes you made to the types in um, the proto migration affect any of the core functionality of the app. You know, uh, in Peggy specifically, uh, we had to change types from things like using the geth common address type from Go Ethereum to a string representation of that. Um, very similar with the Cosmos SDK. We moved from using the um, SDK.ac address type to using string in state. Um, this simplifies a number of things and is an actually a migration that the SDK went through recently, um, but it, it also does require some code changes. So um, the, getting the keeper tests compiling and running and passing helps you get through a lot of those issues. And then as you're sort of working through the module, those are the internal packages. And then you start running the handler tests. There's a lot of changes to the CLI stuff um, and the import paths have changed there. But if you go look at the Cosmos SDK and go look at some of the modules that are already on Stargate, they're excellent examples of how to set up the CLI environment and how to you know, return query responses and um, send transactions in this new format. So, that stuff is labor intensive, especially if you have a lot of uh, messages in your application, but relatively boilerplate. Um, and then you move on to the handler tests and you know that's one step up from the keeper and is actually kind of testing the core functionality of your application. So you'll probably run into some more issues there, have to debug those. Um, and once you've got the handler and top level tests in the module passing, that module is like, essentially migrated and you're ready to start running your integration tests. After you've got the module integrated, you need to migrate app.go. Um, Anil has written a great article on that, which helps kind of explain the different pieces there. Um, so I'd encourage you to go look at that. He also talks a little bit um, about- Where could that be um, found? The changes to module.go in the um, individual modules. Justin, I'm sorry, what did you say? Uh, where could that article be found? Uh, just uh, Google. Me I mean, like, what should it's, I be Googling? Uh, in the SDK docs, I believe. Ah, okay. Well, don't worry about it now, but shoot me a link later and I'll include it in the, and I'll include it in the, uh, in the like YouTube video description for people. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, that might be helpful for folks uh, migrating app.go. Um, but I would also encourage you to take a look at the uh, Gaia PR that upgrades Gaia from the current main net up to uh, Stargate, um, which is very helpful. And then, you know, with Gaia, most applications that are running on top of the SDK import substantially all of the modules that Gaia uses and then add their own custom functionality on top of that. So using that as a guide is extremely helpful. That's exactly what the Peggy app does. So we were able to just essentially use a lot of the Gaia app.go and then add the Peggy module in there. Um, after I completed those pieces and had the entire application compiling and basic tests running, not the Rust stuff because uh, Justin's been working on that and there were a number of breaking changes to the query return formats that won't be too hard to update, but you know will require some code changes. Um, I did a number of refactors here to um, sort of smooth over those changes I had made to the state. So like I mentioned earlier, how we changed the encoding of the account addresses. We also changed uh, the ERC-20 type uh, that we use on the Cosmos SDK side to represent ERC-20 tokens coming over from Ethereum to uh, use the big int type in, the, in Go so that we can rep represent many more decimal places and not run into any issues there with int overflows. Um, so that was the point at which I handed the code off to Justin. Um, so the only things that I kind of haven't really mentioned are the gRPC integration, um, which the queries for gRPC are basically your old querier functionality. And you can just copy that over into the stub server that the generation gives you. And then uh, the transaction functionality, which is essentially your handlers. And you can actually just use your handler methods to define your uh, message server over on the gRPC side. And Neil's guide has a lot more on that as well. So I, I will make sure to share that uh, link with everyone. 
cool. Um, so what I did once I took it over from took it over from Jack um, Gra uh, is that I put on top uh, Jahan's work to deal with the Certic audit of just so um, actually, you know, I'll just let him cover the entire audit. Jahan. Oh, yeah. So uh, the audit, the audit didn't really require many changes. There was um, there were a few things where I was using safe, uh, safe math to increment uh, a counter in a loop when you could actually just use uh, regular mathematical operations. Um, and uh, safe math uses a little bit more gas. So it doesn't allow overflows. Apparently, that's not necessary um, in a loop. Uh, so that was just a, that wasn't a security thing. It's just to save gas. The main thing was um, there was a uh, I was just we were so we were just sending the uh, the ERC twenty tokens with um, the tokens uh, transfer and transfer from um, methods, which are methods on ERC twenty tokens to to send them to people, and uh, they pointed sort of pointed out that if if you were using a token which was um like not coded correctly not conforming to erc20 um it could behave unexpectedly so there's actually a, a zeppelin um wrapper for erc20 that you can use um called safe erc and so basically um uh, we now wrap whatever erc20 token the bridge is using in safe erc before calling those methods and so that like you know prevents problems if if the method doesn't um, return false or throw or whatever if it was a failed transfer. So um, those are the changes. The other change we made was um, the bigger change actually was, which just happened at the same time as the audit was that we removed, um, we had for some time um, for the past few months, we had the code written so that you would, um, you would update the, the val set, the validator set in the contract every time you uh, submitted a batch um, and that was sort of uh, to save gas because once you've evaluated this, like the, the, the expensive part of the Peggy contract is checking all the signatures of the validators. So it's like, once you've checked those signatures, you might as well, um, you know, do the val set as well was kind of the idea. Um, but uh, we were thinking about it. And so before we had, we had a separate, so you would, you would, there would be separate things. You would do both at once. We decided to do that to save gas. And so, um, what we uh, so what we what we decided to do was um, sorry I'm distracted. Um, what we what we decided to do was was go back to the old thing where there are separate methods. Um, and the reason for that is that um, the val sets have a nonce, and um, this, this is kind of in depth. But the each each uh, each transaction batch has has a nonce, um, and so you. You don't want to have transaction batches that are earlier um, being submitted, and um, that's only within the token type, though. But the val set also has a nonce, so that means that you can't submit a you can't submit any outstanding batches to the contract that have not yet been submitted uh, once an earlier batch of any token type is submitted. Um, so that really hurts the throughput. Um, we realized because then. Like let's say you have a hundred batches of all kinds of different tokens. You've got ears, you've got uh, you've got die, you've got uh, chain link, you've got you know whatever tokens, and then they're all waiting to be submitted. And um, then somebody submits one of them, then all those other hundred batches that were waiting to submit be submitted, they all get canceled, and new batches all have to be made by the pegging module on the go side, uh, simply because um, all those old batches will now contain an old val set, which is no longer valid to be submitted. So that was a change as well. Um, so made those changes and um, Jack made the changes uh, on, on the go side to get rid of the file sets out of the batches. So um, hopefully it all works now. Yeah, I just had to fix uh, the signing test. The method was, uh, the method was still called, uh, um, was, um, was still called update and submit batch, uh, update file set and submit batch. So once I fixed that, the go tests for signatures started passing. Um, from there on out, uh, so after this chronologically, uh, my work to upgrade the uh, to upgrade the to upgrade the Rust code started, and what I've been done been doing recently is uh, you know with the with with the Stargate upgrade, 
uh, it's protobuf, 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 protobuf. And um, I have been evaluating the existing libraries in the Rust ecosystem to sort of parse, parse protobuf structs. Uh, and what I've found is that it seems like uh, it seems like informal systems and occlusion uh, are the two are, are both doing a lot of work in uh, Cosmos Rust support as well. And they are both parsing their, their own protobuf structs themselves. Uh, so informal has a crate to do it. It's nice, but it's only for IBC. Um, and I haven't find, found, um, I think occlusions is just within their own repo. Um, so what I've ended up doing at least this morning is sort of trying to organize an upstream location for that so that everybody can cooperate on a single set of protobuf definitions for Rust. Um, because once you have the protobuf definitions, uh, Jack is right, it's not that big of a refactor. Um, you just kind of have to uh, translate things over, you know, just go around and chase all the compiler errors for a few hours. Um, so yeah, I'll actually be github.com, Cosmos, uh, Cosmos Rust or Rust Cosmos? Cosmos Rust. So uh, I have a pull request open for the first release of Cosmos SDK Proto, which is the upstream, which will be the, uh, which will be the official Cosmos scoped uh, upstream definition of all of these proto structs for Rust. Um, and once that's done, you of course expand. Uh, this is right now a uh, big credit to informal systems and particularly, uh, I think it's Greg, yeah, Greg Zabo, um, who did a lot of the, uh, who did a lot of the work for the proto compiler. Uh, it's actually very good. I have refactored it some, but anyways, that's really my progress so far for today. And the target is by the end of the week to get to protobuf definitions, uh, sorry, to get uh, all the Rust code talking to Stargate uh, and be back to where we started before we started the Stargate upgrade, which is working bi-directional ERC-20 transactions um, and as a quick uh, outline sort of where we need to be before we can deliver on Peggy and have people launch it in production, uh, we need to do support for chain restarts, which we've decided to push off until after Stargate. Uh, so that'll be one of the first things we do once this is working again. Uh, and then we need to handle a lot of the edge cases around batch generation, uh, which is really the last remaining challenge uh, with this design. Um, because also slashing. Um, oh, slashing. Yes, thank you. Um, so yes, slashing and then batch edge cases. And batch edge cases are like, let's say the chain ma makes batches two and three, and then somebody submits batch three. Well, now batch two can't be submitted. So the transactions need to go back into the pool. So um, that needs to be implemented because right Wait, now- that happens. Does that not happen right now? Uh, so that already like, happens? Yeah, there's the cancel okay. batch. Well, that needs testing. Alex it needs testing it. Well, no, I think it might be, I think it's light. I, I think I lightly tested it, um, okay. but it's like a happy path kind of test. Um, but there was a cancel yeah, batch, yeah. cancel batch method, I think it was, which actually returns all the transactions. Um, mm -hmm. I do think there needs to be some more thought put into uh, how to make the most profitable batch. That's like the ones, the, the remaining outstanding yeah. kind of deep thought area. Um, but long story short, if you take Peggy off of master right now and you're willing to not have Stargate, you can send transactions back and forth. Um, and there are probably uh, plenty of little bugs with that, but the major, well, and somewhat big bugs like no slashing, but, um, but it is mostly functional and we're in the polishing and then testing phase. So uh, I think, hmm? what did you say, Jack? I think that's a great summary. Justin, you wanna tell us what's, uh, what we should look forward here to in the next couple of weeks? Ah, yes, thank you for the reminder. Uh, yeah, we will be having a test net of bi-directional Peggy um, it, coming just as soon as we finish the Stargate upgrade. I hope that's the end of this week, fingers crossed. Um, but obviously we also need to give everybody a few days to, uh, organize. So, but long story short, next couple of weeks, there will be the next, uh, well, the first Peggy test net as things should actually kind of work. Um, and, uh, that's going to be great. 
Um, and then, uh, Deborah, am I allowed to announce what's after that yet? Um, I think, so. I mean, sorry, let's say, I think so. I mean, I think it's been publicly announced that we're having a demo day in January. Yeah, demo day in January. Uh, and then, okay, cool. I think that is the full schedule of events is that we're going to have something uh, in a reasonable facsimile of production in January. Uh, or perhaps actually production depends on how good things go. So once again, fingers crossed. Um, so cool. Um, I think that's that. That's everything we wanted to go over today. I'll sort of uh, open it up for questions um, if anybody has any right now, and then you know give everybody. Looks like we're finishing about half an hour early, which is great. Uh, thoughts on. Um... I'm just thinking back to the last broken net. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna do the next test net in that type of model. Yeah, um, it's gonna be very much a straightforward, everybody get together, launch a chain. Um, we solved a lot of the problems with the documentation in broken net one. Um, so I'm pretty optimistic that we can once again get to um, starting up a chain and doing testing. I do think, um, so how should I put it? Yeah, for, 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 for the viewer, I should probably summarize that the format for Broken Net 1 was a single four hour block of time in which we got all of the validators uh, in one Zoom chat and we just did the whole thing. We did the whole bootstrapping uh, process and actually started um, and actually got around to starting the chain and doing some tests. And we're gonna try and maintain that format for the second test net uh, because it allows us to deal with bugs better on the other hand, we're going to extend some of the testing, you know, once everybody breaks, once we have the chain up, we're going to do some basic testing, figure out what mostly works. And then um, we're going to explicitly try and keep the chain up for about a week and let everybody just hammer on it to see what breaks. Um, yeah. As opposed to uh, broken net one, where it was very obvious that it was broken by the end of the four hours. Um, and it was very obvious what worked and what didn't. So we could just kind of move on. Uh, but for uh, this next test net, I am hoping to do more testing outside of that four hour window. Does that make sense? Yep, that's perfect. Awesome. I'm, I, I, I'm glad. Yeah, the last time I was a little uh, bummed that we just didn't keep it up and keep it going. And I understand. So I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, well, as a note, I actually did manage to uh, manage to um, retroactively fix it uh, for validator set updates. Um, but transactions, uh, the transaction Oracle had problems that were unsolvable without uh, sure. coordinating all of the validators. Sure. Um, yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. I, I joined late. I joined late, so I'm not no sure problem. if you already answered this, but um, I was just curious. Mm -hmm. You said that the next test net will be after the Stargate upgrade. Does that mean it includes Stargate? Yes, it will include Stargate. And I'm hoping that it'll be uh, that the code will be ready by the end of the week and then we'll go coordinating a test net date, um, which will hopefully be as soon as possible. We'll see what people's availability is like. Will you be using the IBC transfer module as well? Uh, uh, the no, IBC I think transfer we'll... module will be enabled on that chain likely. It will be enabled, but it won't be an explicit part of the test. Of course, if people want to enable it, uh, n not in, I mean, by popular demand, it could be included. <laughs> Michael, uh, just a real quick update on um, IBC stuff. As I, I'm pretty sure you're aware, they've changed the way we're doing identifier generation right, yeah. on the chain instead of on the client. That's a major change. And <clears throat> I don't expect any IBC testing until after that change is complete. So if okay. I were you, I'd check in with uh, Aditya and Colin who were spearheading that work. OK, thanks. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so um, IBC will not be a focus of this testnet, but we will be theoretically IBC compatible. Um, but I think for a later testnet, um, when we're looking for, how should I put it? When we have to look harder to find things that are broken, we'll definitely be testing IBC. Okay, thank you. Okay. Cool. Anybody else going once? Oh, 
Uh, let me see. I think there's something in the chat. Uh, yeah, testnet after two. Well, there's 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 nothing really to bridge to with ETH two until once they have whatever it is that comes after the beacon chain. I forget. No, what they're I'm calling I'm that. talking about. I've been scrambling to stake on <laughs> Genesis block and. I don't want to deal. <laughs> I just appreciate. <laughs> I just appreciate that I don't need to focus on on the peggy nut until after that. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, so thank you everybody for attending, um, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. And if anybody else has any questions, you can drop by the Peggy channel in the Cosmos Discord and just at me at jkilpatr, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, and yeah, so, oh, you can also join the Althea. Um, you can also join the Althea Discord. You can find it on our website, althea.net. And that has the Althea Validators channel, which is sort of the other Peggy channel uh, at this point. <laughs> so anyways, I'll let everybody go and I hope you all have a great week. Thanks, you too. Happy Monday, everybody. Thank you. Take care.